Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I think we need a little more tonight. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. That was much better. <laughs> but this past month has just been absolutely amazing. When we started out on this journey of the what ifs, who would have ever guessed where we'd be today? We have seen kingdom moments. What is a kingdom moment? Well, when we talk about the kingdom of God, we have to think in God's time, not ours. In Cairo's time, not the tick-tock, tick-tock of Kronos, but in God's time. And, and it's good to, to hear that the kingdom of God is already, and at the same time, not yet. Can I get you to turn down the monitors, Jim? They're a little loud up here. I feel like there's a thunder going on. Here. Sorry. So that the kingdom of God is already and not yet. What to me, it's when I realize that God is actively engaged and we realize it in the moment. And it, it's when heaven and earth pass close. That first week we yeah. talked about a few guys being the loaves and fishes as we plan for our, a fall festival. And you were there. And there was a kingdom moment at the fall festival. We were all one body and this beautiful thing together. And then, then we talked about what if we fail. And I can tell you, um, just a couple days before, and we, Miguel and the band, or just a few days later, Miguel and the band were practicing for the night of worship when we had 170 people here. And they thought they were going to fall flat on their faces. That the things just weren't working. And yet, when it started, it was more than we ever expected. Who knew how God would use each person and each music piece that was here, and especially the kids? It was a kingdom moment. And it's, who would have expected those kinds of things? That's, that's what it was. And in the midst of the, this turmoil of the world and in our lives, and in our hearts, we wondered, what if it's now? Remember we talked about that last Sunday? We talked about, what if it's now? And oh my gosh, last Sunday night, it was now. Amen? <laughs> there were 2,000 people here. It was crazy. And it was, it was just like uh, out, of, out of control. Nobody expected it to be what it was. It was crazy beautiful. And it was a kingdom moment. What I want to do today is take a review of the vision God has for us and will use us as we go forward from this day so that we continue to make the what ifs into what it is. Let's pray. As always, Father, I am humbled to be in your presence and to be your servants in this place. To feel your spirit in this room and know that everybody came from walks of life so different and yet we've become a body here and now. And we want that kingdom to come. So today, may we hear, see, feel, may all of our senses realize that the kingdom is here. Already, but not yet. And that we would learn how we can be used to make what is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this kingdom of God, you know, is first it's not just like when it comes, that's what it is. There has always been a plan. The plan God has intended for the mission of this world, it's lived out. In, and we hear all about that plan. Revelation 21 is not... An, prophecy of the end times, but it is a vision of the kingdom come. The first verse says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Can I ask, didn't this campus look completely different than it ever did on when these things happened here? A new heaven and a new earth lived out. And later in verse 3 it said, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples and God himself will be with them. 
and he will wipe every tear away from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. This is our goal with God and from God. Right? That, that's what it is. It's, it, it's the great I am saying, this is it. This is. It, it's a return to eternal peace. And that's, that's not something we can relate to well. Because every time we hear that word eternal peace, we say that about people that have died and we think it's about death. But eternal peace is, is, is about, not about death, but about life. Eternal life. It's about this oneness with God that God has planned from us from the beginning. This, this talk about one body realized. I said a couple weeks ago that at the fall festival, it, we became a body. Well, the same thing happened last Sunday. The same thing is happening here, now, today, with us gathered. We are one body. The kingdom's just a little bit closer. And the world, the universe, and all of creation, all the cosmos is one. The triune God and all of creation have no barriers and no response other than love. That is what it is. And we think, what if that happens? And, and how can we make that come to pass? How can we have more days where we see kingdom moments and the kingdom comes closer? The amazing truth is this. It comes in us. If you read in Luke 17, 20 through 21, once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered them, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. Now, I love the NRSV Bible. They're all over the place here, and that's the one I always quote. But this time, I'm a little saddened by the translation. The King James Version. Let's hear it for King Jimmy. Woo! In the King James Version, I think it's translated better. I think it's translated right. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within us. On a blog on gotquestions.org, it says this, The kingdom of God was not coming in the manner the Pharisees were expecting. The kingdom would not be inaugurated with spectacle or splendor. There would be no great and magnificent leader who staked out geographical claim and routed the Romans. Rather, the kingdom would come silently and unseen, much as leaven works in a batch of dough. Matthew 13, 33 is that parable where Jesus says, The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until it was leavened. In fact, Jesus says, the kingdom had already begun right under the Pharisees' noses. God was ruling in the hearts of some people, and the king himself was standing among them although the Pharisees were oblivious to the fact. The Pharisees of the world are oblivious when the kingdom comes. It's not by law, but by love. And we learn that we talk here in the United Methodist Church about provenient grace. That means to go before. And we, we love to use that term, and everyone who ever comes to Methodist Church are like, what's a provenient grace? Well, that means that God planted in us before we even were. That God planted the kingdom in us. And before, and just waiting for it to spring forth when we accept that gift that God has given us, when we choose Jesus Christ, then that gift is ours. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in us. Let me give you an example. It's been almost two years ago that we, we talked about what we saw, how we saw God leading us. The emphasis was on children and families. God called us to reach children and families. And we built and we remodeled and we bought a bank and we prepared for the children and families. And they have come by thousands. There were 2,000 people here last week and they were children and families. Who knew? God did. And God used us because that 
kingdom within us was, was being inspired to make a difference. God poured the spirit in us to, in our efforts. And the kingdom is closer today than it's ever been. How did that happen? It happened when we chose and God to be used by God and for God's glory. So what did we do and what are we going to do to continue to see that from our what ifs, what is is growing? Well, the first thing we do is we do. We make that choice to follow. Today, we're doing that in part with our commitment cards. During communion this morning, I want you to bring your commitment card up and just lay it on the prayer rail as you come up here and, and leave that commitment there uh, to bring it forward. And as we talked last week, it's, it's about, it's more than about money. It is, you know, the money is important. And, uh, thank goodness for how to come up here and talk about money like that. Nobody likes a guy who talks about money. So glad he gets to do it this year. But, but the form, if you look at the form at the card, it actually says fold here, and I don't want to see what your money, but on the outside, it shows what your plan is that God has called you to. And I really hope that you will also commit that, not just that financial piece, but that you will look on the other side of that card and say, what is God doing? And I think the line that is most important is that blank one. Because God may be speaking to you about something completely different, and I don't want to step in the way of that. Amen? Let's not get in God's way while well, this is going on. And this is, this is what we're supposed to be doing. And that's, so as we start this process, we start to talk about what we're going to do from this point on. Then we're going to risk failing. I have a 100% fail rate. I'm pretty sure of that. Because every time I plan something or every time I think, okay, God, I've got this, God does even more. So even when I think I've got it, God takes it a step further. And, and so 100% of the time, God gives us more. And he uses those failures and those moments to make big things happen. We don't even understand big yet. I thought I understood big when we had 500 people running around here. Look what's happened. It just keeps growing. It's scary. <laughs> and that leads us to the belief that God has us. My daughter knows this passage very well because she's been a part of this youth program and it's her favorite verse, I think, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through God who strengthens me. That's what we believe. Anybody else have any idea how we pulled off last Sunday night? <laughs> Absolutely not. In the same sense, the timing is now. You see, we have this precious amount of time to be used by God. And we've got all sorts of things that will take that time and use it up on us. But we have this precious time. James 4.14 says, Yet you do not even know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. And I don't want to be some spritzer mist that didn't do anything for anybody. I want to be a mist that was used by God, that the kingdom came a little bit closer because God used me. How about you? That's where God expects us to be. That's where God loves for us to be because we're following in the kingdom's path. And every time, every day, every moment we choose, the kingdom of God becomes more of a reality. The already not yet of the kingdom becomes more already and less not yet. You see that? That's what we're doing. We're doing more already and not less of the not yet. These are things that we've experienced this last month. The lives were touched in the last month. So our steps towards thy will be done on earth. Do you see that God is using us for the kingdom? This month has been more already and less not yet. Amen? Amen. What's he talking about? Amen. It's more. The kingdom is here. We're on a roll. And it reminds me of 
Martin Luther King's famous scripture reference about justice. See, the way that God understands justice is that this kingdom come is for everybody. And Martin Luther King did this quoted Amos in this, his wonderful speech talking about how justice matters. And I love the passage, Amos 5.23, but let Amos 5.24, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Do we dare be a part of this? Do we st dare to step into the waters of justice by bringing people closer to the saving grace of Jesus Christ? You see, we have the kingdom. We have the keys to the kingdom. They're in our hands. We are. The Spirit is within us and the kingdom keys are in our hands. Matthew 16, 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What are, are we going to dare? The answer is simple. We dare not. Or we'll miss it. Remember what we said last week? I don't want to be too late. I want to be part of this now because it's taken off. Amen? Amen? This was John Wesley's understanding of the kingdom of God. Dr. Joel Green says this. He says, in fact, it is not an over-exaggeration to say that for Wesley, everything is oriented to the fulfillment of God's rule in the coming kingdom. But the kingdom is no pie in the sky in the sweet by and by. It is a reality that calls for present radical commitment a life of christian holiness and service under the present reign of christ you see wesley called for radical commitment jesus christ calls us to radical commitment to the kingdom amen and so that's where we're at we're like on the verge of this amazing kingdom getting closer and closer and what are we going to do about it we're going to follow Jesus. Remember that passage from last week, Galatians 2.20. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Right here, right now, by the grace of God, let's turn what if into what is and will be forevermore. The keys are in our hands right now, and it calls for us our present radical commitment. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.